Hello, and thank you for stopping by. My name is Jason Conine, uh, System Engineer, Tech Data Corporation. We're going to be checking out the new vSphere Data Protection 5.5 uh, and its interface. We're going over a brief demo of how to backup and, and restore uh, with the new product from VMware. So, once you have vCenter, uh, vSphere, and you deploy your vSphere data protection appliance in addition to any agents on SQL or Exchange servers that you have out there, we will be brought to this current screen. Here we're going to go ahead and start creating our backup jobs just like you would any other backup application. So let's create our first backup job very simple to use interface what we would do first is create a full image of a guest machine right so we're gonna select guest machine we're going to make sure we have full image selected let's select a couple machines choose a schedule and a retention policy. Let's give this a name. And finish our first backup job. So our backup job was created. So what we can do is go ahead and run it immediately. So we can select the backup job we just created select this backup now button and backup all sources as you can see now we have two successful backups of those two Linux machines we just decided to back up let's go ahead and create a new application level backup so we'll go back in same way choose applications we can choose uh, either full server, select a database. And this is going to auto discover SQL servers or exchange servers. So in this case, we're auto discovering a SQL server and we're going to choose a selected database within SQL. We want to back up. We can configure some advanced options such as the backup types so or full or incrementals. In this case, we're just going to go ahead and use do full with no multi-stream backups. Choose a schedule and then how long we want to keep this backup data. Give it a name. And complete this job. We'll do the same thing. Let's select the job, back up all sources, back up our SQL database here. This one didn't refresh. Let's refresh so we can see if it was successful. We have a successful backup. Now what we can do is then once a, re a backup is done locally, say we want to replicate this to another VDPA appliance or replicate it to a data domain appliance. So at the top, very easily to find is a replication tab. We have an error here that no replication jobs are found. That's normal because we haven't set any up yet. So let's set one up. Now, here we get to choose the clients we want to be included in this replication job. So earlier we chose uh, Linux 1 and Linux 2. So let's choose those. Choose which type of backup we want to replicate. We'll just say all of them. So all backups will be replicated to let's put in the IP address of our VDPA appliance or data domain appliance. Let's put in the credentials. Now 
then we can verify authentication just to make sure we're able to log log in. move forward choose our schedule so we don't want this to happen every day so we'll say every Sunday when no backups are occurring we'll replicate everything off-site set an expiration uh, we can keep it forever or keep the current expiration for each backup let's set an expiration for this backup type um, say 180 Let's give this a name. Okay. So let's replicate this now instead of waiting. Just gonna go ahead and replicate our backups to the VDPA appliance or data domain appliance. So that takes care of backup and replication. Let's go in and create some some restores, right? So under the restore tab, we also have the ability to verify a backup. So let's do that first. Let's choose a machine we want to verify. choose a path let's pick a schedule maybe this Sunday and we've created our job <coughs> Who's going to do a manual restore now of that machine? We can drill in to this machine and see, um, you know, here's the image. We can go in and we can see the the disks if we needed to in, within that image. Um, in this case, what I'd probably do is just do a, you know, the full image uh, a restore of a virtual machine. Just go in and do a restore. Uh, we can restore to an original location or have some more advanced options that uh, we can change if need be. So that's how simple it is to create a, uh, to restore a virtual machine. Let's go back and say instead of choosing uh, another full image let's choose an individual database so here we can select the path and the database and let's restore this same options we have a couple more advanced options if we need to if we needed to use them and we'll cancel this out because we don't want to restore the vCenter database right now so that's it for backup replication and restore if we wanted to we could also run some uh, reporting uh, for example we could go in and choose a specific client just to make sure being backed up and restored we can scroll down you can see here that the last backup job was successful powered on and the verification job let's move to the last tab configuration here's where you'd put in your VDP adva advanced license You'd also be able to edit your backup window configuration. So in most cases, you'll probably have this uh, the opposite. So you'll have maintenance during the day and your backups during the um, during the off hours, right? So you're able to modify just the default backup window and configuration. 
here's also the screen where you will download all the different agents so your exchange SharePoint SQL 32-bit um, and 64-bit versions of SQL. You can also see that the VDPA appliance storage summary is located on this tab as well. So this specific appliance we've carved out 536 gigs of space. 533 are free. The non-deduplicated size of all of the backups at this point would be 45 gig and the current size that it's using is 2.4 gig due to the deduplication. You can also click log to show recent log events for the VDP advanced appliance. So as you can see here, this solution from VMware is a proven and mature technology from EMC Avamar technology. VDP advanced enables both agentless VM backup and recovery as well as granular application consistent backup and recovery for our tier one applications such as Microsoft SQL Server, Exchange, and SharePoint.